their seats. We're going to start the afternoon session. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I want to wish you a very warm welcome to the half hour we have dedicated to uh, Africa this afternoon. Um, I would like to propose that we do about a 15 minute presentation and leave maybe about 15 minutes for Q&A in case you, um, you'd like to ask me some questions. I've been in this business now as a leader for a little bit over a year. And um, I came to it, I should say, with a very fresh prism. Although I was familiar with emerging markets, nothing I think prepares one for, for the realities of Africa. It's been a very, very exciting year. Um, and um, you know, really what I wanted to spend the next 15 minutes or so really doing with you is sort of taking you through my perspective on it and um, you know, what's really happened over the time that I've been there. Um, Allow me to talk you through maybe first some points around our strategic intent in the, uh, in the region. Um, even though actually my background is not in telecommunications, I come from the entertainment and internet space, um, the main focus and my main focus really in the last year has been absolutely on repairing our core mobile business in Africa, which had been X growth um, for those of you who've been following Medicom since 2011. And this business is very different from a Latin American business, um, which has been a very strong growth engine for the company for a long time. Um, and really, the order of the day here is about the turnaround. Um, you might think that that is a difficult thing to do with the Tigo brand having been tarnished for, for some time in this region. And um, um, some of you who might be more financially orientated might think, well, that is going to be a very costly affair. Um, um, and I might normally agree with that, except that I think that we are benefiting from a very unique window of opportunity in this, in this continent, whereby we see a very dramatic shift in consumer behaviors as um, our customers are changing from the voice space and are starting to explore different opportunities in data and the internet, which in turn leads them to reevaluate their, their offering and their, their providers. Um, and so as the landscape evolves, um, but also keeping in mind our difficult financial history, um, we need to be very focused on picking our battles. Um, and so I've really spent some time reflecting on the consumer franchise that we want to build, you know, the customers that we want to pick. Um, we can't do everyone. Um, the product roadmap that we want to approach these people with. And, you know, of course, um, you know, securing a financial return on this effort. Um, you know, we are entering in, into a new space. We partially have to do catch up in the space that we're coming out of, the voice space. And we now need to be laser, laser focused in terms of how we're deploying our capital to ensure that we uh, get a very positive um, result on that. Um, Personally, I'm very excited about this opportunity. I think that we have a very, very interesting um, uh, space that we can enter into um, as, as the internet finally comes of age in Africa. And I believe that we can create a very unique combination of different kinds of services that will set us apart from, from others in, in this sector. Um, I should say that um, results have been very encouraging. Um, we've seen um, since my start in, in the early summer of last year, four quarters of consecutive growth. Um, growth has been accelerating, as you can see on the left-hand side of this chart. Um, sorry, I, I think I might have ex gone a bit quickly here. Um, on the left-hand side of this chart, you see the, uh, the revenue performance of the business by quarter. On, on the black shading, um, you see the dollar amount, and the light shading, you see it in local currency. Um, and you can see as growth is accelerating, we're now firmly in double-digit um, territory in local currency terms. I should also say at this stage that all of our six markets are showing growth um, in, in Africa. Um, while this is a very good performance, um, I should also say that I expect this to be our normal cruising speed in this continent because as we consider the macroeconomic context, which in fact you can see on the right-hand side here, we're talking about the second fastest growing region in the world. Um, by its very nature, this business should really be um, a strong uh, growth business. Um, 
maybe a, a point or two to make about this growth, because actually the macroeconomic context does impact the ICT um, industry very materially. Um, growth is driven both in product, by productivity, but also by population increases. Population increases inevitably in Africa are very high, and uh, we see, you know, even as we look at the longer term in our business, a strong influx of customers coming into the telecommunications uh, space. Um, in the shorter term, I think what is very interesting for us is that um, we see that this economic growth is trickling down outside capital cities into regions. And so increasingly, as we look at our markets in Africa, we need to take a much more differentiated view um, and look at how places like DRC and Tanzania, et cetera, are composed of different kinds of regions with microeconomics you know, so that apply to different um, parts of those countries. Also, of course, um, Africa, um, I've used the word emerging markets earlier in a very loose way. Um, I, I think really what we're talking here about is, is a set of frontier markets, not really emerging markets. Um, but we do see a very strong growth in the middle class, and I think we will see over the next few years Africa graduating from frontier, at least in some of our markets, towards um, emerging status. Um, we just sort of touched on the short term, but um, I also think the long term is very, very exciting here. Um, I th I'm sure most of you are familiar with it, but nonetheless, I want to spend a second on it. Um, I think two factors you know, are very exciting and I think interesting for us. First of all, as we look at our investment um, plan for Africa, I think we need to look at the macroeconomic growth runway that will be unfolding over the next two to three decades, and we need to be absolutely sure that what we're building here is sustainable and takes advantage of, um, of that context. Also, of course, industry economics improve as we migrate uh, technologies. Um, we're looking um, as we're migrating from 2G to 3G and 4G, and these become more efficient to deploy on a per side basis. This is, of course, very meaningful in a large place like Africa. Um, and barriers to entry remain high in the industry, so there's an element of protection and, and, and um, uh, tailwinds that, um, that support us over the next uh, years. Um, I think Hans Holger touched, uh, touched on it in, in his presentation. I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time on the risks inherent in frontier markets and in Africa in particular, but um, nonetheless maybe worth highlighting for 2014, what we're seeing is a very strong foreign currency impact on our performance in Ghana, for example. And um, also I should probably point out that um, you know, sort of the much vaunted tax pressure that the industry is, is, is experiencing in Africa is of course primarily driven by government coffers being quite empty. And uh, you know, as one spends more time engaging with governments, one actually does understand that they struggle with security situations, with health crises, um, uh, re-elections, and so forth. And so I mean, the reality is the coffers are empty. And you know, that is a dialogue that we are having with our governments around taxation, new licenses, et cetera. That is uh, a permanency, I guess, in, in our business. Um, you might wonder what actually did happen to lift performance. Um, and uh, this slide sort of I was hoping to capture some of that. Um, first of all, to say that um, we've done some obvious things around um, infrastructure, <laughs> processes, and, and tools. Um, in terms of infrastructure, um, as, as our growth in, in, in recent years was, was very slow, our investment stance also did, did, did actually reflect that performance. So there's an element of catch up to be done. And I think what, what I really wanted to highlight here is this is not really about catching up willy nilly with the competition. What this is really about is a very targeted capital allocation program that takes advantage of you know, the regions that I was just earlier referring to. And on the right-hand side of this chart, actually what you're seeing here is you know, how materially different market shares can be in even one market. Um, and so, for example, you'll see here, whereas we might have, let's say, a third 
or so little under a third share typically in a capital city region. Once you sort of go out of the capital, you know, even in places like Tanzania, where you're looking, for example, at the lake region, which is a very strong economic growth engine for the economy, um, you know, that, that drops right down to maybe around half. And so, you know, as we are deploying capital, you know, very carefully in those economically viable regions, there's a real potential uplift that we will get from, from that investment, which we're currently estimating at two, two to three hundred million dollars, you know, sort of towards the latter part of, um, of the plan. But um, in terms of tools, what I really wanted to highlight here is, is that we're still in Africa in a price game. Um, and, uh, you know, of course, we're embracing the value strategy. Um, but also, let's make no mistake, we have to be absolutely world class as we reflect on our pricing and, and do it in a very, very uh, targeted manner. Um, you know, I've been very focused on making sure that the pricing decisions we're making are being done with you know, all the best tools um, that, that we have, because that is the one thing we can do in the very short term to, to lift performance. Um, but let's make no mistake, in the end, you know, and I think Hans Sogar sort of talked about this very eloquently, it is about people. And um, what I really wanted to highlight here is, first of all, our engagement with governments. Over the last two to three years, and this even predated my arrival here, um, we've had extensive engagements with our French-speaking governments in Africa, um, sort of as I sort of start from the past, maybe Senegal, you know, two to three years ago, more recently uh, Chad, where we recently renewed our, renewed our license, and, um, you know, of course, also uh, DRC. Um, I'm very happy to say that whereas these relationships were maybe problematic um, until recently, I think we're in a very, very good space uh, these days, and I, I genuinely feel very positive about, um, about our engagement there. Um, the second thing, of course, in terms of people is, well, our talent. Um, I think those of you who might be familiar with the Africa business, we've made very, very extensive changes to the management lineup. I don't have any pictures to show you, um, but um, <laughs> I guess you'll have to take it uh, from me um, that that's happened. Um, out of the uh, six general managers, um, we have uh, five new ones, essentially, and you know we've made some very dramatic changes also to the uh, lineup um, below the general manager uh, layer. But of course, there's no point talking about people when we don't mention our customers. Um, we have done a lot, um, maybe not as much as my colleague Mario in Latin America, because you know we are very focused on still the core business in Africa and fixing that. But nonetheless, uh, we are also very focused on innovation. Um, because the key differentiator for us, even in Africa, is about um, new technologies, uh, financial services, which is a very material part you know, of not just our business today, but actually our forward view on, uh, on the African market. Um, and of course, the, the opportunity in the, in the internet space, where also we have deployed the free Facebook initiative you know, and uh, data bundles and so forth with really great um, results. Um, so, looking forward, um, we see that um, essentially the consumer environment is very, very, very positive. And what I wanted to highlight to you today was four key trends that we see that, um, that, that are all digitally related in some way, shape or form, if you bear with me, um, and you know, that I think will very positively impact uh, our business. First of all, um, uh, urbanization. Um, the, the internet space in Africa is happening in cities, primarily. We're talking about you know, very particular clusters of, you know, of populations. And these happen to be places where Tigo has historically been very strong, by the way. And so it affords us um, uh, a strong historical opportunity anyway. For, uh, we're, we're operating from a position of strength in, uh, in these particular you know, population clusters. Um, we're talking about relatively wealthier people, more educated people, younger consumers who are looking for you know, fun things to do, basically, as one does in, uh, in cities. Um, and so that trend really helps us you know, as we're engaging in this, uh, in this space. Uh, second, of course, to say that usage is actually really happening. When we look at, um, at the data space and, and, and the analytics that we have there, 
um, what we see is that there are two, two key things that are driving uh, um, usage. First of all, video. Uh, YouTube is very, very um, popular in, in Africa. Um, this is, of course, also partially driven by the lack of mainstream television. Um, in our markets, and uh, of course, secondly, social networking. You know, these two things are real drivers of internet trial. You know, as we see it today, um, in the analog space, though we expect a transition to digital, um, uh, our blockbuster is mobile financial services. You know, I cannot um, overemphasize how important this is and what an impact this has for our customer base, and also how it really does increase loyalty and stickiness to. Uh, to our brand. Um, we see it um, also as a key for the future because you know, clearly it does create a payment platform for us in Africa you know, where there is none uh, to pay for um, digital products uh, in, in, in the longer term. Um, in East Africa, where we see most of the success in, in, in our financial services business, um, uh, today two out of three customers are regularly using um, financial services with, with Tico. Uh, which is, you know, I think a very, very positive and strong performance. And then finally, you know, I think it was mentioned uh, earlier, well, nothing happens without the smartphone. Um, and um, this, the, the pickup in smartphone sales in Africa is absolutely unbelievable. It's really, really blistering. To give you an example of that, last year we sold about 30,000 smartphones in Tanzania, which is our largest market in, in Africa. Today we're doing 40,000 phones a month. Um, I mean, this is a very spectacular uplift um, uh, that we're seeing in, um, in, in, in device sales. And I think this, this gives us a really great platform for, you know, for, for rolling out our, our data services, both in the access space, but also in the content side of things. Um, of course, um, our focus, um, you know, and I think I talked about focus before, we really want to capture this opportunity of the internet. We may not have been, um, you know, we may not have ended the era of the voice um, business in Africa, you know, in a leadership position, but I think we really have a fantastic opportunity now to recapture the initiative and, um, and, and, and move very strongly into the internet space. So essentially what I'm now very focused on is transforming our business and really uh, focusing it on exactly that. Um, what this slide really aims to sort of show you that we have a very clear customer target where we are very aware of sort of what market share that represents, who these people are, what kind, uh, what gripes they might have with us and with the industry in general, how we can fix that, and um, you know, sort of we've laid out a roadmap of improvements to our business, both across network, customer sales, you know, et cetera, et cetera, to really be able to ready ourselves for um, for this uh, for this customer. Um, and in, in terms of the digital ecosystem, I'm not really going to go in, into it a lot. Um, I think our Latin American business, I think, has demonstrated to you, I think, in a very, very extensive way um, what that might look like and what the Millicom view really is on this. Uh, we are looking to do something very similar here. Um, and, um, and, 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 that will and that will comprise both in-house developments as well as uh, partnerships uh, within sort of the broader um, ecosystem of, of the digital world. Um, as we roll out the da data-capable infrastructure um, in, in our African markets, of course, it would be foolish not to consider the B2B opportunity in, in that context as well. And you know, as Mario said, in Latin America, um, you know, we feel the same way about this opportunity in Africa. We are starting from much further behind. Um, uh, the bad news is that that's, well, um, obviously we need to build it. The good news is it gives us good growth opportunity um, in the next few years. Um, finally, um, I don't want to miss the point around um, capital efficiency. Um, I think um, Tim and Hans Holger will hammer this point home to you. We have criteria around it. We're very focused on it. Um, Africa is no exception in terms of deploying these criteria. Every dollar we spend, we ensure that uh, we have a capital uh, return of around uh, 20%. And um, you know, I'm not spending any money, uh, at least consciously, um, that uh, falls below this, uh, this criteria. Um, 
And so the, maybe it's worth spending two minutes on you know, why I think this is possible and also why it's really important to look at this you know, on a market by market basis and you can't really generalize in Africa. So on the one hand, let's say, let's start with Tanzania. Um, I highlighted to you earlier that we have an opportunity here to expand into regions. Um, in Tanzania, we're the number two operator. It's our largest market and you know, we're very close to being a leader on, um, on coverage. Uh, there, as well as, by the way, in Chad, uh, our second largest African market. And so here, um, it still makes sense to, 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 to be a genuine leader in coverage. And um, you know, our, our capital um, investment there um, uh, is not just focused on winning in the digital space, but also you know, still uh, ensuring that we remain the leader in, in the traditional sort of voice space you know, as well. Um, if we do then fast forward to, let's say, in other market, Ghana, um, I think we need to be realistic. Um, I think in, in Ghana, um, Millicom uh, faces challenges in terms of scale. And I think we need to be very focused on the kind of opportunity that we want to capture there. Um, and so, you know, there I think we would not necessarily really nilly start uh, covering the country with towers. I think we need to be very focused on the customer target that I earlier referred to and making sure that we're spending capital ruthlessly to just capture that target. Um, and, and we need to give up ambitions perhaps in, 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 a, in a broader sense. Um, I, in the next few slides, I just wanted to give you a bit more granular information, sort of how we see uh, some of the key opportunities. In terms of data, our expectation is to get to about 33% penetration in our base um, by 2017. In terms of um, the B2B space, um, I'm to give you a sense of how big that opportunity really is. If we look at our markets, um, we're looking at uh, sort of an overall market size um, of around, well, somewhere between 800 and 900 million dollars. Tigo today does not capture even 1% of this opportunity. And um, you know, as you can see, um, you know, it doesn't take a, a, a lot of brain surgery that um, you know, there's some quick wins in this space and that is a real, uh, you know, it's, a, it's, it's, it's part of our option space for sure. Um, and we see it as a natural add-on to, to our business. Um, this sort of sums up a little bit of what I wanted to communicate to you today um, to sort of sum up. It's a turnaround. It's a turnaround focus on our core. Um, we feel very good about this because we see the rules of the game changing and uh, we can position ourselves to take advantage of this. And our focus really is around uh, digital. Um, finally, I wanted to sort of make mention of an announcement that we made earlier. Uh, we announced, that, uh, we announced uh, in the press that, we, um, that we're launching Tigo Music in a number of African markets uh, still um, this year, and also that we're taking a position in uh, buying, um, uh, well, actually taking advantage of the emerging market in music rights in Africa, where we're um, uh, investing not just downstream in, in actually the Tico music uh, platform, but also the actual rights space um, behind us, which is very fragmented and where we see huge opportunity for value increases. Thank you. Um, I think we have some time for Q&A. Feel free to, oh, I see. Lots of arms going up. Um, I think you were first on the right there. Yes, hello, Sven Schaal from Swedbank again. Um, just wondering about the, the margin uh, that has come down from around 35 to 25%. Mm -hmm. How much is, of that is related to, um, I think you mentioned uh, the uh, uh, significant subscriber intake in, in, uh, in Tanzania as an example. Mm -hmm. So how much of that margin drop is re related to acquisition costs and how much is kind of underlying pressure? Um, well, I would say that um, it's true that we have a very significant customer acquisition costs in Africa, in particular in this year, and it's in fact over budget. We've, we've taken in massive amounts of customers. Um, this year. Um, my, my view on margins, and I think your questions are consistent around margins, um, I think my view on margins is that at this stage we need to focus on stabilizing margins. 
um, I think we need to um, capture the growth opportunity and make sure that we are positioning ourselves correctly in the space that we now want to be in, and then over time align with, with, with the group target uh, on margins you know, as we sort of get towards the later parts of the, uh, of the plan. Does that answer you? Maybe the gentleman behind you. Yes, hello, Stefan Goffang, Nordea. Um, regarding uh, profitability in, in Africa, uh, there are some markets that are more challenging. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess uh, one way would be to, to look at M&A opportunities, mm -hmm. uh, where you could perhaps strengthen your position in some markets and perhaps divest mm -hmm. other markets. How, how do you view that? Uh, possibility in, in Africa? Are you looking for, for M&A uh, deals? Yeah, um, I, I, get, I actually get asked this question quite a lot because um, in fact M&A activity in Africa is quite, uh, quite active, uh, shall we say. Um, my, my view on this is that um, you know, our strategy really requires us now to be focusing in depth in the markets where we currently are. Um, you know, we are transforming ourselves from being a telecommunications provider to being a broad convergent player. And so we really need to focus on, you know, on sort of deepening, you know, our product offering and extending that in the places where we currently are. Um, rather than sort of saying, okay, well, what, we now need to add another four or five markets because, you know, we somehow feel like it. You know, that's just not really, I think, my, my focus um, right now. If we then sort of look at um, consolidating um, uh, you know, our presence in the markets where we currently operate, um, it, it, it may be true that there are um, opportunities coming up. I don't see those maybe as positively as maybe the press uh, speculates upon. Um, and, and, and I think we would, take the, we would look at these as, as they come up. But I can assure you that uh, those are far and few between at this stage. Thomas Heath here with Handelsbanken. Uh, you mentioned uh, in Ghana that perhaps you uh, needed to be more selective in, in terms of, uh, of CapEx and where you spend money to, to find returns. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to clarify that a little bit, does that mean a, a more regional uh, strategy within uh, Ghana if you compare to roll-up plans for Tanzania? Or what does it actually mean to, to be more selective in the mar markets where you're doing less well? Thank you. I think I think it's it's again about the prism that you look um, uh, that that you look through, you know, in terms of the business. So you know, one prism would be to say, well, you know, we are still in the traditional game, and therefore we need to have blanket coverage of Ghana to win in the voice space, uh, because you know, if you look at key success criteria in that space, it's about coverage and reliability. You know, that's basically it. If you though then fast forward to the different consumer requirements around um, the digital space, um, then that sort of prism changes quite a lot. Um, you know, then different criteria become more important. So for example, reliability of your network. Um, uh, if you then look at your customer target, you notice that um, you know, you're no longer looking at a nationwide customer base, but you're looking at a slightly different cut. Of, um, of your customer base, and that then has implications for your network coverage uh, strategy um, uh, as well. Um, and I think Mario, for example, talked very eloquently earlier about um, so the opportunities in terms of setting your network up for success in um, monetizing data. Again, you know, sort of if you're looking at capital allocation, you know, do you put an extra tower, let's say, in northern Ghana, or do you then you know, spend that on uh, you know, those kinds of capabilities? Um, you know, I hope that I sort of illustrate to you a little bit sort of, you know, some of the choices that we're facing there. And um, I think what we're very focused on at this stage is winning in the digital space. But isn't it so that you have to have quality and reliability at least where you have subscribers to, to have a chance in? And completely, yes. Yep. Okay, thank you. I mean, in fact, quality and reliability become even more important because, you know, you're looking at the issues like latency, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, that becomes a much more complex uh, question. Sorry, I think you, you were first there. I'll come back to you in a minute. <laughs> Thanks. Nick Hi. Brown of Goldman Sachs. Um, given Millicom's operating cash flow margin targets, uh, when mm -hmm. should we expect Africa to start to meaningfully contribute cash to the group? 
please. Um, <laughs> let's just say that Tim and I are having this discussion uh, most days. Um, I think in reality what we're looking at is, um, is 2016. I think there's still a short period of time where we, uh, where we realistically need to strengthen our position in Africa before we can, um, you know, I think sustainably, and I think I use that word and I need to underline that word in bold, sustainably set the business up for success in the longer term. Um, sorry, I think there were, I'll come back to you in a minute. Okay. Uh, I'm, uh, my name is Eric Makangu. I come, I'm coming from uh, DRC, Congo. Uh, I'm sorry for my accent. <laughs> okay. Uh, you can I'm, ask the question in French, it's oh. fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sir. Uh, I'm uh, doing business consulting, and um, I'm, I came to see how's Medicam doing what is the focus of Millicom, mm -hmm. and I get in the, um, I, I hear about these events, I say, mm -hmm. let me come to see how Millicom going. Because you are, you are in a good place in the market in uh, DRC, and mm -hmm. uh, you can do better, you can do more, more better. Mm -hmm. And um, what I wanted to talk about, uh, <laughs> I prepare myself, you, you talk about here, about B2B, how to the, the focus on B2B, in data because we enter in data uh, now Africa we are going in, in data business mm -hmm. and uh, I'm personally um, uh, I have an experience and I have uh, also a portfolio uh, that I can put in a contributing contribution for the Dominicom and we will mm -hmm. yeah so uh, that this is my the reason of my my coming here okay okay okay. M and A opportunity then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, it's a question relating to Tigo Music, and it actually relates to to Latin America as well, because you are choosing a strategy where you are teaming up with the sort of two different business models. We have one partner in Africa where you contribute. You're going to build a sort of music library, etc. And Latin and Central America, you're basing it on the Deezer platform. Uh, what kind of sort of skill sets do you have internally to actually manage to different <laughs> business models within this area? And could you also give us some sort of data points when it comes to differences in economics, contractual length, etc.? Yeah, I think Hans uh, is proposing we cover that in the next uh, session. Otherwise, you may have nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> Any other question? The lady in the back there. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll go first. <laughs> You're allowed to. Yeah. 55 seconds. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, I, I, I'll just uh, going back to the margin question. Um, yes. Uh, try to understand uh, the uh, investments in, in, in coverage, how much, much has that impacted margins? How much has MFS impacted margins uh, in Africa? Yeah, so I, I, you, understand, you, you, you I, I understand your question. I think, you know, and, I, and I, unfortunately, uh, I'm, I'm going to give an answer which you're not going to like, which is that, you know, actually the complexity behind the business is such that that is probably the wrong prism uh, to deploy. Um, you know, when we look at, at um, that particular issue, I think what, what really drives different difference or, you know, sort of uh, in, in, in margin actually isn't really that. I think what is driving it is actually the country portfolio and the critical scale that we may have in one market versus other markets. And so, you know, when you look at our portfolio of, of, of businesses, um, you can cut it by country, you can cut it by product, I mean, you can do different cuts. And, you know, all these cuts obviously contribute, you know, to different kinds of uh, views, you know, my uh, my my. What I'm positing to you is is that the, the the best way to look at that, the best cut, is you know the geogra ge geography cut, 
um, where we have a number of markets where you know we are mature, where we have scale, where there's growth, and you know we have a certain margin performance, and other markets where you know we're in a different development curve still, you know, of the business, and that then impacts the mix, you know, of of, of the margin performance for for Africa as a whole. So you know, generally, I would say that you know what I'm very very focused on is to ensure that we uh, that we have the right scale in the places where we operate because that most materially impacts the margin. Does that, yeah. is that a fair answer? Okay, yes. Uh, yes, Elian Ostberg from Carnegie. I was gonna ask you on centralization of OPEX, if there's any potential. Because if you have some markets, as you said, which are small uh, and lack critical mass, mm -hmm. uh, is there more to be done where you can sort of centralize OPEX and certain functions to take away some of the cost burden from the smaller countries? Yes, I'm looking with, uh, with a smile at my colleague Xavier Rocoplan here as the CTIO. We've done quite a lot of that uh, in, in, in that space. Um, and I think as we, um, as we look at other opportunities in that regard, actually, um, I'm, I'm uh, you know, sort of, there's the obvious areas, the overhead areas like technology, et cetera. Um, but um, also when we look at the deployment of uh, newer businesses, for example, music was mentioned earlier, and how we might sort of bring talent to bear in, 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 in that newer space. I mean, clearly, um, you know, it's very difficult to replicate that on a market by market basis, and it makes more sense to sort of approach that at least initially, sort of with a more centralized, you know, talent uh, stance. So, you know, I would say it's in some of the classic areas that you, you'd normally expect, but then also, you know, we sort of selectively look at that, you know, as we enter into sort of the newer business spaces, particularly in the internet content uh, game. Yeah, I think that's all that. <laughs>